on the, the topic of esports a little bit, because I just I don't think a lot of people necessarily know how this happened. You might have done a clips video, but just in case. How did yeah. you end up joining Cloud9? Because obviously, if you guys don't know, Cloud9 is a tier one organization, and me and Ferg were together on Cloud9 for a little while. I actually ended up being on Cloud9 because of Ferg, which he'll probably explain soon. But um, how did you end up joining Cloud9? And for upcoming esports players or creators that want to join an organization, what kind of advice would you give them? Um, so I was friends with the C9 Clash Royale team. How'd that and happen really quickly? Because that's an important aspect is becoming like networking and building up these, these mm -hmm. relationships. So I played Clash Royale and I uploaded YouTube videos on Clash Royale. I even did some like news videos where I would like cover different news things in Clash Royale. Um, and I uploaded it for maybe like three, four, five months, maybe. I think it was around five months. And I got to know a lot of the pros in the scene and mm -hmm. um, the way that Bobby plays with a lot of pros or whatever on his um, ranked streams and stuff. So on the discords with them, we played loads of games together um, and they were all in like tier one orgs and I'd never been like in a tier one org at this point. It was like, there was Cloud9, NRG, all of these like American orgs, um, TSM, all of those guys were all in Clash Royale at this point because they just started their franchise league. Mm -hmm. And through these Clash Royale calls, somebody found a game called Rules of Survival and we all started playing it together. And I would play it on the iPad on this exact same desk with all these Clash Royale people in the same call. They would be like, you should start making videos on this instead of Clash Royale because at this point I was just, I was so done with CR. I did not want to play it one bit. It was that kind of burnout mentality, except back then I had no reason or motivation to keep pushing through it. I just didn't want to do it. And I played, played Rules of Survival with like the number one, like the best Clash Royale pros on the planet. And I would like carry them to wins 24 seven because I just love playing the games. And um, obviously back then I was way more toxic <laughs> than I am now. <laughs> and it was a ton of fun. And um, around like, I think it was late February, I finally decided to take that leap, take that leap of faith and um, take the Clash Royale pros advice by playing Rules of Survival. And then I was still friends with them. I would still Discord call with them pretty much like every other day or whatever. And a lot of these guys are still pros like in the scene today. They still play professionally, all that stuff. They live in LA in the LA houses or whatever during the regular season. Um, but then there was something that was coming along. I think my channel was kind of dipping. And I realized I needed capital. Like I needed money because at this point I hadn't made enough money where I could um, kind of just coast by. Like I could, right? I could just coast by for the rest of my life uploading these like mobile videos right now. I don't really elevate in the game, but back then I hadn't. Um, so I was in a call, I think it was CMC, Eric, Adam, and oh, Trainer Chris, that's his name. And they were all on Cloud9. I was talking to them about like joining orgs or whatever. And then Eric um, said to me, he would put in like a good word to Ian, who was the mobile manager for Cloud9, for me to be a content creator. Hopped in a call with Ian, discussed all that stuff. And but then he said he wanted me to be like a pro player or whatever, but I was not really like... I was not really feeling like being a pro player. So then I went to you and then I said, yo, like, can you like assemble a team? Because <laughs> yeah. I didn't know anyone in the like pro community. Then That's what I was like. Call. I was hosting tournaments back then too, like little community yeah, ones. Loads. That was kind of what set it up. So I like knew the entire, like everyone yeah. at that point in NA at least. And Europe a little yeah. bit. Yeah, you knew way more people than, than I would have ever known. And then we hopped on the call with Ian and he made like, he asserted the fact that we were going to be pro players and not content creators so then we needed to be on the team as well and then i think once that was all said and done you got seth and hot and hot got a i think was our yeah no, it wasn't our fifth was it our fifth because he was pissed that i was the starter <laughs> yeah yeah i remember that yeah that's that just like bad that's just like bad like sportsmanship you know what i yeah. mean I just, he should have just took it. <laughs> and wait wait for your moment to shine and then like yeah, prove yourself exactly. in that moment because you can't control that. Yeah, so I think one of the biggest tips for me personally with trying to get on an organization is not only focus on your skills, but focus on your brand because organizations aren't going to take, well, sometimes they do, but they're much less likely to take a risk on a player that doesn't already have a presence in something that's more marketable because you're going to be a way better, way better investment if you have something with your brand because yeah. esports e orgs majorly run on sponsorships like that's how they get their funding that's how they pay the players and everything and unless you're very popular you're gonna be much 
much more of a risk essentially. So when yeah, loads of risk. Yeah, so Cloud9 entered a game that wasn't this big, wasn't putting a ton of money into the scene, stuff like that. So it's hard for them to justify a team. But it was a lot easier when they say, hey, we can get these two fairly sizable creators, get them on the team, and then hopefully they pick up some very good pros and we can win tournaments as well. They were kind of making a better decision in that way. So if you want to if you want to get on an esports team or organization or anything like that, number one, you got to be a good player. Like you got to work on that, especially if you're going to be trying to win championships. But also work on creating your brand. Just don't, you know, get get OBS open, start streaming, do whatever you can. Social medias, Instagram, Twitter clips, all that stuff. Like really focus on building that out as well. Also, like connections. Like if you're going and into networking. calls and being super toxic to people. And making them not like you they're never gonna help you you know what i mean if i was yeah. never friends with the cr guys like i would never be where i am today like i would have never taken their advice played rules of survival and went to call of duty mobile fortnite mobile cyber hunter all that stuff and it was just because i was friends with them and we had a lot of good times to together that they actually put a good word in and i got the contact with c9 in the first place bro so i feel like always... that, i feel like i feel like there's been times where organizations are scouting and they go to like I mean, I don't. This sounds kind of toxic, but it's totally true. Like, I feel like there's been an organization that came to us one time, and they asked if these players are good options, and we're like, nope, they're good yeah, players, no. but they are terrible for your brand. These guys are yeah. dropping the n word in Discord chat, stuff like that, and because of that, they're they're not going to get signed because they, yeah. for some reason, thought that would be okay, and, and they could do stuff like that. So you do have to really focus on not burning bridges, maintaining your your. Okay, my camera just shut off, but maintaining your personality and and brand and everything and being professional with it you know what i mean oh yeah of course because a lot of people know really yeah no org wants to play with someone that is just being super negative and toxic and aggressive or doing illegal stuff and You're especially rich. if they're a tier one org they don't want to deal with that so yeah. if they hear word like when i was trying to join orgs at the start of call of duty mobile um even though I signed with Tribe, a lot of them would still come back to me, especially when COD Mobile had announced their championship stuff and ask me like about these certain players because those players would email their like contact thing and say, hey, we've got a team. We're really good. Would you like to hire us as contracted pro players for your org? And then they'd check, they'd like type in COD Mobile into YouTube and I would be the first person to come up with like five videos because I put COD Mobile in every single title that I, <laughs> have, that I have. And they would message me on Twitter and stuff and I would always let them know if like, this guy was bad or that guy you shouldn't pick up that guy or this dude's toxic or anything like that so even now i'm i'm at the stage where i'm out of that like i don't need it's not that i don't need connections but i don't need to rely on them anymore because i have the brand but when you're starting out if you don't have a brand and you're burning all these bridges you're gonna screw yourself over and that's why we've seen a lot of people from like rules of survival change their name when they join, like yep. I don't even know half the people from Rules of Survival are in the COD community anymore because they all changed their name because they all were super toxic back then, and there's loads of logs of them like being toxic. Yeah, and the only but history yeah, I, of them is their name in Discord. Yeah. Which if they yeah, change, they had it, no they face reveal, anything yeah. like that. So they just they got out of it, which was a smart move by them. To be fair. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely some content creators though that have maintained their name and face and still burnt bridges. There's definitely oh, a few. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Don't don't do that, especially if you <laughs> if you have your face and your brand and you're trying to build something and you're just yeah. constantly trying to I mean, like, start drama with creators. The only time is, drama is acceptable is when it's planned. <laughs> yeah, when it's like when planned it's, and faked. But yeah. even now, I'm not gonna name any names, of course. But there's people in the COD Mobile community that will like subtweet me about stuff that I don't even like care about. You know what I mean? Like oh. oh you're, this person's way different or this person's like focusing too much on this and i'm like dude let me live my own life i'm just trying to do my best chill out relax drink some water and be on your merry way to your own channel <laughs> to drink your wawa just... <laughs> yeah drink your wawa drink your coffee <laughs> uh, shout oh, out jake dude. shout out jake yeah shout out jake lucky my guy but yeah there's like even now there's still people that'll burn those bridges i just don't understand the mentality behind that the more bridges yeah. you have the more places you can go like it makes yeah. so much sense yeah facts all right on the on the topic of esports well actually did you okay yeah we covered how you joined cloud nine right from like yeah. the networking as well as like the the steps that it took yeah, yeah okay how did you leave cloud nine i know this but i don't think people know like what was the was that a decision you made or was that something cloud nine just kind of did or, or was it very intentional and in, in how yeah. you wanted to approach that 
So it started with, I didn't want to stream on Twitch because I knew that Twitch didn't have any discoverability. And we had to. Not for, yeah, we, we had, had to stream on Twitch because they had a partnership with Twitch, Cloud9 did. So I think I messaged, I messaged Chrissy and she couldn't get it done. And then I messaged Jack. Our the, new manager, by the way, was Chrissy. Yeah, I messaged Jack, who was the CEO of Cloud9. And Jack, is it N, N, at nine or something? At, 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 or so, at, nine. at or something. But Jack, if you look Jack up on Twitter, he'll probably come up. Either way. And to him said how this was like going to hurt me substantially and stuff. So I think what they did was they publicly released us from our contracts, but we were still playing under the organization inside of the game. We weren't then, pro players because the, the Twitch contract said that all your pro players need to stream on Twitch. So they said yes. they are no longer our pro players. They're just content yeah. creators. It was a weird okay. system. And Sorry. then while we were still under Cloud9, I realized that my worth would go up significantly because I was preparing so much for Call of Duty Mobile and I already knew like th this game was going to blow up and my worth was going to be much more than what they were paying me at the time, which was back then it was great, but now it would be like... Uh, you want to publicize I... that? I feel like we could just because people are always curious about that. I think we're allowed to. In, in Cloud9? I don't know. Yeah. If, we're, if we're allowed to, sure. Uh, I feel like we can. Would you be cool if I said it? I'll take the fall for yeah. it. Because I feel yeah, like people don't care. It was like a thousand back then. We were making a thousand dollars a month. As well as it should we say the cut as well? I feel like that's oh, man. it's so like I understand the cut that they took because of the risk, because it was such a yeah interesting game. Like looking back on that now, that cut it was, was such a big massive. cut. Massive. That was yeah. like I don't even know. Are we allowed to say the cut? Are I, we allowed to say? I feel like we can because there's no contract anymore, you know? There's nothing that like binds us. Yeah, I have no idea. We'll say this so that we're not liable. It was above 45%, below 55%. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. That, that makes sense, yeah. So yeah, it was like yeah. a thousand a month. And then our tournament winnings were pretty much halved, you could say. Roughly. Uh, and, they, and they took that. And um, then we got some like free stuff or whatever, which yeah. was great. I still think it was worth the verification and all that. Oh, yeah. Like we got verified on Twitter and stuff. It was awesome. Yeah. And like it's, the, it's a part of the, like, like I said to you earlier about the resume. Yeah. Clyde 9 on the resume, dude. Yeah. That looks pretty good. That's a pretty good looking resume if you got Clyde 9 on there because they're, I think they're the highest. I don't personally think they are, but they're the highest valued org in the world world currently. I still think that's Fias, hands down. Um, and yeah. But from like tournaments and stuff, they're considered the highest and they're one of the most re well respected. So from an esports standpoint, for sure. Yeah, we still made out with the bag. Like we still got loads of money and we would never had that team assembled unless we joined with Cloud9 anyway. So yeah, yeah. it was still like, it was great. It was still, it was so much fun playing and there was lots of good times and it was the bag was secured. So it was definitely great. Yeah, I just want to make it clear really quickly. I don't think in any capacity they were scamming us or anything. I think they just had to do something like that because they were taking a risk in a game that was not in their eyes super safe you know like if they do a league yeah. team that's a lot different than doing some random mobile bat battle royale shooter game you know what i mean so i totally understand what they did and i think they balanced that kind of cut really well with the benefits they could give us with the verification and all that i think ferg and i would have got verification anyway at some point but getting it that early on was very pivotal and like you said the resume and everything so i definitely yeah. think it was it was good i just wanted to put that out there because i know people are always super curious what that looks like and what the more specifics are